plastic. So here's the beholder. He has four removable eye stalks and he has other ones that can be glued in in place with like laser beams and shit on it, but I'm not really a fan of those. I like them in his inert state where his eyes are just looking at you like, I see you. So mold line cleaning, I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous making this video. I didn't do nearly as much mold line removal as I normally do. Um, plus, they're on the stocks, which are like, you know, phallus shaped anyway. So having a line up the side is pretty much not even noticeable. These on some of these bony protrusions were a little more noticeable, so I scraped them off. Uh, you know, any type of uh, crazy glue to adhere the stocks will work just fine. I use the uh, Games Workshop. Apologies for the bounciness of the camera. My elbows were on the table and it was making everything shake. I still got to get the hang of all that. Uh, I'll get better. Now, I was going to prime this guy black because obviously he's going to be a shadowy creature, so black is is for the win. So I primed the stock so as it wouldn't get, I'm sorry I didn't prime, I taped the stock so it wouldn't get paint on it during the spray paint section. I didn't even think to, to paint or to, sorry, to tape the base as well because I didn't really want the base black but whatever. I just taped this riser because those clear things are a bitch. I have to clean it later in the video you'll see it for the parts that the paint got on there. So Citadel Chaos Black, good old spray paint again. Shakes, shake, 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 shake. Smart. Again, you live and learn. Serial Mimi Garage just glued it with some of that sticky thing to the uh, meter stick that I have there. Give it a good 360 degree juice. Maybe I use a little too much. I don't know. Use it on a meter stick with that poster tack. So Eshin Gray first color um, that I'm using. It's pretty much for all the bone plates. And again. My first time, so there's my gray ass head sticking in the camera. I did my best in post to get that out of the shot, but subsequent videos I'll do better to make sure they, they stay good. <laughs> As you can see, I'm a variable thesaurus here. All right, Skaven Blight Dinge. Love that. It's got a little more, more brown in it. So I put that on the sides of the stalks in some areas and then on, some, on top of the plates to give it a little like a two-tone color. Between us girls, this was not my favorite miniature to paint, this this color scheme and this go around because uh, of just black on black on black on black. I know why I did it, but whatever. Mechanist Standard Gray, again, just going up the gray scales. You don't have to use all these paints. You can just use black and add different levels of white to it to make it subsequently less black. Uh, if you don't have the same range of paints that I do, I'm a bit of a collector so anytime I get into something I like to get as much as I can I go to my gaming store and I try and work out deals where I you know buy three or buy five get one free kind of thing so again just working up the stocks putting a little bit of detailing on here um, again it was my first time painting a mini on camera so I think I was probably a little more messy see I use my finger there when the paint's wet and if you make a boo-boo you can just use your finger to quickly wipe it up on your finger and then it doesn't dry bad so a little bit of mechanicus mechanic whatever standard gray just another gray on these stocks okay so there's a stock great Nagaroth knight this will be the foundation for his lips and his gums because again it's a nice deep shadowy purple which i thought fit with the idea of a creature from the shadow fell so just slop it all on there uh, before I forget, so one thing that's not really in this video is I did use um, a shade. After this was all done, I used a night shade. It's like the purple Games Workshop shade. Oh, nice camera work, man. Move that up there. Oh, terrible. Who is this guy? What a scrub. Anyways, use the purple for now. Use it on the tongue, the back of the mouth, inside the mouth. Eventually, I'll shade it. It just gives it a little more pop. When you see the finished picture, that's why it's a little more pop than in this. Dawnstone, again, I'm just scaling my grays lighter and lighter. Uh, I try to use this as a layer, like an edging of these plates. It's very rudimentary edging because, again, I didn't want, it doesn't really allow for too much detail when it's black on black on black on gray. And uh, maybe someone out there is a better painted, has more understanding of color theory. But just for what we do, it's good. It's good. It's good, A-Tank. It's good. So 
so again I'm just putting on the front lip of all these plates and his chin plates and I think I do his tongue with this color too you know really wanted to do like a nice cool red tongue but again I wanted it to be shadowy and black black on black on black all right, so what are we doing here next? Uh, some around the eye, some detailing around the eye. We already did that with Skaven Blight Dinge. Now we're just kind of putting another layer of uh, Dawnstone around it. Okay. Now, the eyeballs. I did the eyeballs gray and then subsequently white and then red and then red and... The reason is I like to build up the colors because the layer paints do sometimes shine through. So rather than putting it on the black, the white wouldn't be as bright. So even here, I'm using Dawnstone on his pupil, on his um, white part of his eye. So here I am. A lot of water. The water helps it go where it needs to be. Don't worry if it gets on the bottom because we'll touch that up later with black. You're just outlining. You want that pupil hole area with the cornea to be super black and sharp. And don't let any paint get down there. And yeah, I think I just used a water brush to suck up some of that paint that I had spilled down below. Uh, some more Skaven Bite. No, that's the other one. Mechanicus. Standard gray on his tongue and whatever. So here we are just hitting those eyeballs again. You can see the black on the black on gray. Gray on black on gray on black. It looked really cool when I painted it. I think that ultimately when I dry brush it later, it kind of ruins it but whatever only because the dry brushing of the long beard gray which we'll get to um, it just makes it too light anyway so here we are we're doing the teeth with Dawnstone which I'm gonna then use white and I'll actually paint them gray again because uh, I started with a gray teeth and then I decided that I wanted more contrast because it was a little too gray so you can see they're gray now this is just roughing them in do the touch-up work later and my my beholder model was a little flawed some of the teeth were stuck together and they had some weirdness I cut them out as best I could off camera but um, I've done three of these beholders now and this was the was that well, this one had the most problems all right corn red this is for the uh, iris so since you got a nice sharp edge there do not hit the edge with the red do not spill it over and hit that gray just nice 90 degree angle brushes so it like rests in that hole and you see how I'm kind of left right left right it prevents it from going up and over top so it's a nice solid line that's what you're trying to get Just take your time it's probably the only thing about the whole mini that's striking because it's all monotones you really want that color to pop when someone looks at it that red eye needs to be super bright okay so I'm going over the teeth again with another gray because I think they look too dark which I was which I was right they do look too dark again when you're doing the gray oh, nice camera when you're painting the mouth don't worry if you hit the gums because it's always easy the beautiful thing with these paints is they dry so fast if you hit the gums you can always go over see my wet palette there that purple is still sitting there all juicy waiting for another splash and you're free to touch it up later don't do it in the middle just keep going with your task you can go do the detail stuff last I'm like the biggest shortcut taker when it comes to this stuff. I do care, and I am definitely, I want, like, I want it to look good, but, you know, see there I am with the purple, just touching up some of the tongue and maybe some of the spots between the teeth. There we are. See all the little messes? And that was only drying for, like, two minutes, and here I am painting over it with purple. You know, the paints are great that way. I've only really ever used Games Workshop paints, so I guess I'm a fanboy. Mephisto on red. This one's a brighter red. See how it just jumped right off of that corn red? And then I switched to Ceramite White. Trick with this, lots of water. Water that down. I'm just literally making a puddle. See how the puddle, it kind of creeps? And then I, I'm shaking a little bit. You can watch him shake, shake, shake. And that's because I'm trying to maneuver that puddle. I'm using my brush to, see, I'm tap, tap, tap. I'm trying to get the water to, to run down the eye and let the viscosity of the water do the, the painting for me. Now I'm going to use the brush and just poke. See that tiny little brush? I have one, oh yeah, I'm just dropping the eyes. The eyes are, circular spheres are so fun to do when you have water because the water just retains the sphere. So just touch it. See how I just tap it and then they leave those perfect little circles and then I fuck them up by touching them more, but whatever. See how that worked? Now, this looks really cool. 
except I tried to do two-tone teeth. I did half gray and half white, where I only painted white on the one side, and then over here I painted white on the other side, which I thought would look cool, and it looks like garbage, which you will see in a second. Which is why on my video I kind of hid this, and I'm like, oh, no, that looks terrible. So look how his teeth look all gross. I'm doing a little bit of um, black. I got, no, that's not black, a little more gray. Yeah, a little gray on top of the black primer because he was all prime black, right? So I'm using some of that first Eshin gray to just, it's not quite dry brushing, but I'm not filling in all the holes. I don't want him to be black. I want him to be gray with black underscales, right? So by gently painting with the Eshin gray and not pushing my brush into it, it leaves the Eshin on top and the, under, the underneath stays black. That's good. Dawnstone, here we go. Bye bye white. And like these white teeth look so bad. So here I have to go paint them to paint all my white back to Dawnstone gray. So the teeth at this point are really pissing me off because I'm filming this. You know, this is why this filming video went so long because I'm literally fucking up and fixing it on camera, which when you don't paint, you just do it for yourself. You don't have to worry about that. You can paint as much as you want. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> And, you know, at least I'm not putting the beholder off screen for a change. So, yeah, there's the, the Dawnstone. Let it dry. Go do something else. Abaddon Black. Sounds good, Mike. So, here we go. We're going to take some Abaddon Black and I'm going to touch up some of the areas I messed. We can't see it because I'm top down. It looks like I'm around the base on this one because he was primed. And there were some areas around the base that the tape covered, so I had to just touch it up. Now I'm going, I'm doing these lines between the, the scales in black just to give them a little more definition and then I just paint the whole thing black and say okay let's try that there's a lot of water on there so it should dry a little translucent like a little translucent to let some of the gray through but whatever uh, again just touching up with that black anywhere where I might have nicked okay now we are on to a part that probably could have been cut because it looks like I'm just thinking I might have actually cut this in the video because it looks like I'm just thinking okay back to corn red a little bit of the drop again with the water if you do spherical and you don't rush you can get nice little perfect little circles by just putting a lot of water and dabbing it and uh, here I am again touching up some of my white crept into my iris so I'm just using a very small brush and a very big breath and holding it just to try and get that which it did and there's a little shake to try and get that paint to settle. Now I'm going for nothing. Nothing, man. Okay, so now we're looking around, looking good. Um, what are we doing now? Tongue, a little more tongue. The thing with the tongue, because it, it got primed, but the paint kind of moved off of it. Like it, I don't know what the hell to say. So here we go. I'm doing white on the teeth again. This time full white. That's easy. Just gloop it on there. Just like toothpaste. Pull it nice and down. Oh, here's a good one. See, I fucked that up. A little bit of water on a brush while it's still wet. Push it in there. A little bit of more water. A little bit of more water. And then a dry brush. It sucks it out. And look at that. I hit his gums and I completely fixed it without having to let it dry first. While it's still wet, um, you can do that. You'll, you'll figure that stuff out as, as you go. Just finishing the teeth here. I decided that to get the contrast on the teeth. Oh, okay. So I'm just using some super glue gel glue to glue it to the base that it came with. So I can do some basing while I wait for the teeth to dry. Hold it down for 20 seconds. It's good. So now I'm going to do the basing material, I think. I recall. I'm just going to play with the red a little bit more because it's dry. Again, you just move from zone to zone where it's not wet so i'm letting the base dry i'm letting the glue dry i'm working these eyes again while the teeth dry and the drying only takes five minutes so you just kind of move around and don't touch things and smear it but i really like those contrasting teeth so i'm going to use astro granite yay so this is a basing material it's just like you can make it yourself with sand and glue but i'm kind of lazy i like the your, the games workshop stuff and if you can't afford it then get them why not so screw Splash, splattering it all on there it's like it's like baby shit actually with sand in it <laughs> if you've ever heard of baby it's all goopy so I'm just pushing it in there I'm, what I'm trying to do is the area between the chewing gum base that this guy comes on and then the black disc I want there to be no seam I don't want it to look like he's glued on a disc I want it to look organic so I use the gray and let it dry put him in my fancy holder here 
Again, people use corks. Here comes the Apothecary White. This is the contrast paint. I don't like contrast paints too much, but I do for this. So there's my knife. I'm just cutting out some of the dry paint that was in the way. Oh, cat's going to arf from hairball. All right, I know it's kind of off-center, I apologize, guys, but here we are painting the teeth with the Pocket Theory White Contrast Paint. Now that the teeth are dried, and all we're doing is just putting that on there in a healthy amount so that where it settles, it'll kind of take on a gray um, shape. If there's a little too much, I'm using just a dry brush uh, to suck some of the paint out. I didn't want it to be too gloopy. Now I'm cleaning that. Remember I told you the primer? So that's my scraper, and I'm just scraping the clear shaft <laughs> so that I can get that black spray paint off of there, okay? Because, you know, it's a pain in the ass, but it's what you got to do. Or else it just doesn't look great. All right, back to some of this white. Now I'm just fixing some of the mistake I made by making a little too big of a pupil. Just give it a little more definition. Just use a brush that has a good end, whether it's hooked like mine or straight, doesn't matter. You just want to just hit those little teeny spots like a sniper. Don't put too much paint on your brush. I'm just doing white again on the front of each tooth for a pure contrast because the apothecary white dries kind of gray. And I do want that for between the teeth, but the front of the teeth, I do want stark white. So now that I've put that white on there, you can see that between the teeth looks kind of gray. And on front of the tooth, each one, it looks like a nice sharp white. Now here's the long beard gray step I was telling you about. I use this dry brushing technique to make a the little more definition of the scales, which you should recall earlier, were eschen gray on top of black, and I wanted a little more detour, and I got it. Unfortunately, see that black right now? See how black it is? Now look what happens to it. When this, eschen, when this long beard gray goes on top, even though it's just dry brush, now it's kind of a gray when you look at it, instead of black on black, which I kind of wanted. So, you know, what do you do? You learn... You go, God damn it, I shouldn't have done that. Duck don't care, though. A little more touch-up work. And, uh, I guess more touch-up work. Great videography. I'm going to win an award for this one, boys. All right, basing. Now that I've got that Astro Granite dried, I just put some glue on, use an old junky brush. I cut down to small to map out where I want this stuff to go. And then I have this black substrate from Army Painter. It just looks like black sand. You can make this stuff yourself with paint and sand if you want, but I just use that. I just push it onto where the glue is. So now I have a two-tone effect of the Astro Granite plus the substrate. Now I put a little drop of glue and then these little bushy things, push them down hard, put two of them on there, push it down hard. And that is the Rallicor. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, thank you very much for watching my videos and my channels, and uh, I love you, Mom.